a brief presentation on uh, clinical vignet called costin syndrome and also to uh, you know explain the interlinking connection between the medicine fraternity and the dental fraternity on this particular condition and exploring further as we all know clinical vignettes are basically those cases patient related cases and scenarios that have educational value for wider audience now sometimes we know good cases come in many different flavors some are unusual diseases whereas others are unusual presentations or symptoms of common disease so uh, per se here for me the interviewing factor to provide today's presentation was the name associated with this condition which happened to accidentally come from a reference from one of my colleague and i had to explore and do a presentation to further realize that uh, a multidisciplinary approach would be a better approach in providing a good quality uh, health for the the patient while treating the condition uh, per se so moving on to understand further costin syndrome is basically eponymously associated with the ent surgeon james costin way back in 1934 he had mentioned a condition which was similar to or which would attribute tree to the temporomandibular joint wherein uh, neuralgia of mandibular joint would lead to auricular temporal nerve irritation as well as uh, cauda tympanae which in further leads to the deafness or difficulty in hearing as well as tinnitus so these were his uh, researches wherein he started associating the disturbances or instability with the temporomandibular joint could also affect the uh, hearing difficulties so as in as we move further as in like 1959 we do understand with further researches that costin syndrome is basically a symptom complex syndrome wherein uh, your head and neck uh, pain or the head and neck region is well is included wherein the pain is around the ears headache uh, headaches are there at the vertex then you have pain typical of that of sinus diseases otological symptoms of loss of hearing tinnitus is seen and some of the miscellaneous symptoms as well as um, something similar to burning sensation because of the somatosensory system as well as the central nervous system involvement we do have uh, burning uh, mouth syndrome as well as metallic tastes in the mouth then as we move further to understand this condition we realize that costin syndrome can be the name could be more preferably associated uh, if we have a temporomandibular joint disorder along with the otological symptoms wherein you see uh, hearing loss blocked ear sensation tinnitus vertigo along with uh, or associated with attributory to the temporomandibular joint areas and the main cause of these otological symptoms could be because of the temporomandibular joint in such cases the synonym or the eponym of uh, costin syndrome could be utilized and moving on to the symptoms we realized that this con uh, the condition uh, shows the symptoms of headaches paresthesia neuralgia on one particular side and there is sometimes partial or even total loss of hearing tinnitus uh, restricted mandibular movements crepitation and clicking is also observed so coming on detail with the pathomechanism we do understand there is lot of uh, crucial uh, uh, you know vertical dis vertical dimensional display uh, di disturbances or collapse bite uh, because of the missing teeth or because of the anatomical uh, defects congenital defects of the growth of the ramus of the mandible attributing to the tmj stability which could lead to further tensions in the muscles around the face and neck causing the forward posture or the cervical kyphosis and leading uh, further down we can see the hyoid bone instability can also be attributed to the same thereby leading to the impingement of the cranial nerves associated and also this side if we come across we would see the calcification of the stylohyde ligament uh, sometimes uh, eagle syndrome and ernest syndromes are associated and because of the proximity of the joint with the ear you do see sometimes a herniation uh, into the external auditory canal dysfunction of the eustachian tube and of course uh, mentioning about discomalula ligament or pintos ligament is worth mention here which would we'll explore further in the upcoming slide so this is a picture which depicts the close proximity of the cervical vertebra and temporomandibular joint basically so we understand that uh, the cervical instability in itself uh, could be associated with temporal temporomandibular joint disorders or either uh, versa wise wherein temporomandibular joint uh, disability uh, you know dysfunction could be leading to the cervical instability as well because of the cross proximity and nerve uh, impingement 
so we do because of uh, as we see the picture depicting the digital motion x ray we do understand that uh, you know the because of the hypermobility we do have symptoms and we further understand why it is uh, you know the disturbances in temporomandibular joint are so closely related to the tinnitus vertigo and dizziness so this is about a mention on the pinto's ligament as we go explore and now as per the researches we do understand that basically the pinto's ligament or the discomalular ligament which was recognized way back in 1962 and long forgotten in the anatomical history has been revisited again which actually emphasizes that there is a connecting uh, this is the ligament which connects the neck and the anterior process of the malleus of the ear to the uh, in, you know interradicular disc and spinomandibular ligament that is why the temporomandibular joint disorders and the tinnitus and deafness are coexisting in most of the cases the stretching of this ligament could cause the tinnitus and basically to mention about this ligament this is supposed to be an embryological remnant of lateral pterygoid muscle and basically it's an intrinsic uh, ligament of the temporomandibular joint so most contributory factor could be this in exhibiting the motological symptoms when it comes to the temporomandibular joint disorders moving on to the uh, you know uh, therapeutic reasons where non surgical non invasive ways could be because of uh, could be utilized uh, using arthrocentesis prolotherapy because uh, with uh, by injecting the dextrose solution or simply giving tens uh, therapy and physiotherapy which would provide good relief to the muscular and tmj uh, region and as per the dental fraternity concerned we would want to check the vertical dimensions if any instability is because of the collapsed bite uh, or because of the anatomical defects of the ramus or congenital defects then further surgical corrections would be needed and we would want to give splint for the resting of the muscles and reducing the inflammation thereby uh, you know also ruling out if there is any sleep apnea conditions thereby doing uh, appropriate referrals to our ent colleagues or to the pulmonologist orthopedic surgeons if there is instability of the cervix involved um, cervical instability involved and further um, physicians consent could be taken for further evaluation of the condition so of course when it is uh, solely because of the collapsed bite and uh, because of the occlusal instability from our side we would want our prosthodontists to intervene and take over uh, for the prosthetic rehabilitation or any surgical intervention from the maxillofacial surgeons so basically the motive or the drive behind today's presentation was to join the dots between the multidisciplinary approach for the holistic well being or the you know improving the quality of life of a patient with temporomandibular joint conditions being so enigmatic and um, you know myriad of symptoms are exhibited each time associated with the joint we would want to rule out any condition uh, be it uh, you know night grinding or the bruxism which could lead to the tmj because of the you know occlusal cusp erosion so we would want our gastroenterologist to opine we would want our uh, you know orthopedic surgeon to uh you know, rule out any cervical instabilities with the disc motion x rays and we would want our ent surgeons to take care if there is any auditory involvement or autological symptoms seen and uh, thereby when we uh, you know rehabilitate a patient uh, orally you know dental rehabilitation we would be further improvising and giving a better quality of life to the patient not just uh, looking at the temporomandibular joint but uh, the associated structures and the proximity of this temporomandibular joint with uh, you know surrounding structures becomes very important when we are dealing with these cases and uh, thank you all